Let's see, we've got some stuff to do today. Um, we're doing Foot Fridays. We're gonna feature one of our Bernina feet, and I think we mentioned it the other day in our live video. We're gonna take a look at the number 43 Bernina Couching Foot. It's one of my favorite. And it's a fairly new foot compared to the rest of the line. Uh, many other machines have a similar foot and uh, we're going to cover other brands in other videos and the foot is even um, available on for lots of long arms so it'll be a lot of fun so if today isn't your machine day stay tuned for the tips and techniques of using the foot because they apply all the way along and then we'll do some research and see if uh, your machine has a foot like it this is the packaging for the 43 foot. Bernina 43 free motion couching foot. Um, in some of our past videos this year, I had uh, demonstrated, um, for lack of a better word, a tracking foot. So it's down, the feed dogs are down and it walks just like your number one foot or any other your basic zigzag foot. But this one, it's uh bernina calls a hopping foot it's spring loaded and it's got quite a big base on it uh, what i have seen in past is when people are trying to use this foot they suffer a lot of problems and when somebody's trying to sell you a foot they they usually don't ever get there they just show you how awesome it is and then they only do the things that the foot is awesome at. And I'm going to show you how to get 100% or 99% at the best out of the foot. And um, just why, why it works like it works and why it doesn't work and what might be a solution to that. Because it's always good to have that know-how. When you open the box, it has the foot, of course. But there's all these little bits and bits in here. Two of them are um, guides and they attach to the various uh, machines. The really long one is for Bernina 7 and 8 series. This little one is for most of the others. Uh, this clips onto the side thread cutter and this one clips right onto the head of the machine. And there's instructions how to put that on. And then what you can't probably see on camera, because I can barely see it in real life, there's a really fine metal thread uh, threader, like a dental floss puller. And so we've bagged those. So when you open the box, they don't go flying everywhere. And then you say, but I didn't get that piece. You did. It's in the corner of your sewing room under a cabinet, rolling around with the dust bunnies. And my first best tip <laughs> on this particular foot is that you thread it first. Threading it while it's on the machine. I can tell you it's a lot easier when it's not already on the machine. All right, so I have a single spool thread stand here. So by putting that on the thread stand, you have you don't have to worry about where it is and what it's doing, it'll feed off of here. Then one of those thread guides will be right about here and it'll come in and it'll keep it out of the way I'm not going to put one on this machine. It's not my machine. Alrighty. So the reason I said it's much easier to thread when it's in your hands like this, um, if the cord doesn't ravel, this one kind of does, often it will go through the first hole, no problem. But getting it down into the sewing hole, that's the difficulty. You can put the threader down into the hole. Put the cord in the threader and then pull it through. And so what's really different about this foot is the cord actually is encased in the foot and goes down through the needle hole. Uh, picking cord for this foot um, 
The instructions with, that come with the foot say 1.5 to 2 millimeter cord. What I would suggest is when your picking cord, if it just flows freely through there, you know you've got one. Uh, if it also almost fills the hole, you've got a good one. Beware of lumpy, bumpy uh, yarn that changes um, thickness as you go along. They're quite fun and lovely, but if the bumps don't go through the hole, uh, you're going to have a jamma. But it's quite lovely, easy to thread when it's in your hand, and a little more annoying when it's on the machine. So I've got a few projects I'll show you after, uh, but let's talk about technique first. So if you can uh, lock your machine uh, by telling it you have a straight stitch plate on, you won't accidentally bump uh, the width button and have a zigzag because this, this foot is straight stitch only. That's all you're going to do with it. I want you to kind of take a look at the flow of cord here. So if I drop the foot and you probably want to turn your knotting functions off and you won't um, you could use your uh, cutting functions but you can see the needles going right into the cord and when I move in this direction if you watch the flow this is the position That'll give you pretty much 100% um, dead center stitching into whatever cord you're stitching down. When you go, say, north, I bet you get about 95 to 99% accuracy. Or when you're coming south, there's actually just a little less, it kind of drops in my opinion to about 95. Now the direction that's the least friendly, this one. If you see the flow of the cord, mm -hmm. it's under pressure. And so in actual fact, here, it pulls away from the needle. Let me just, if you're yanking on it, you can see it pulls out of the hole a little bit. So that one drops to about 90% uh, stitch accuracy. I'll get try to get a close-up for you after, but I'm using a um, dark navy thread on a pastel cord so you can see how it is actually stitching. Now the fun stuff, let's get to the fun stuff. This foot will do little teeny tiny circles, which is something you can't do with a regular free motion foot. Hopefully you can see those pretty well. Little teeny tiny twirls with that cord. Um, some people will use this uh, in quilting. I'm just using a piece of cloth and a stabilizer right now. So you can see a meander stitch here. And if you take your time, you're going to get 95 to 99% stitch through. What happens most commonly is people are pulling too hard, rushing too fast, and there's actually not a stitch in the cord. And there might be a loose spot. Like I think right there, I have a teeny tiny spot where the cord is not technically stitched down. But it's being held in the beginning and in the end here no problem. So some fun to be had here embellishing. Whee. There we go. Have the cutest little balloon heart. And as I said, this is just a piece of stabilizer and one piece of cotton.
cute little flower. All sorts of fun stuff. What do you think? So it's it's a cool cord to play with, the Laspiga. The foot's amazing. You can use all sorts of um, wool and string and cord and ribbon, as long as it's catching. Now the, I'm gonna show you some samples. So I wanna show you an, a, an embroidery I did. So this uh, was a continuous line quilting pattern. Uh, just out of the machine I had at the time. And, and it's a lovely pattern, cute black and white. However, take a look at me now. The most amazing thing about this foot is the Bernina's uh, embroidery machines recognize it as an embroidery foot. So exact same pattern, exact same fabrics, however, I put Laspiga in my machine while it was embroidering because that machine recognizes the 43 foot as a viable embroidery foot. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, to use it successfully in your machine, you just have to identify in the embroidery unit um, which foot you're putting on because it is, as you saw, a lot larger. There's just some pretty button fabric under there. And then uh, I took some black Laspiga and just did some three-dimensional texturing. It's just fun. Because a lot of people then, they buy the foot, they're excited about the foot, but then they're not sure what they're doing with the foot. But you could use it for almost anything. Okay, I wanna show you a project. Uh, this one doesn't have any Laspiga on it. It has other items on it, other cords and cording. And I just played. One day I just played and played and played, and I used all sorts of techniques, uh, couching different ribbons and cords, and stitching and free motion. And this side's a bit different. I use the circular attachment. I use some more cords and cording. And all I did, I spent the day and I made cloth, just a big chunk of cloth, fun, fancy decorated cloth. And then I cut it into this great tote bag. This one might be easy to see, uh, whiter, white stitching on black. So this looks like I might have used my circular attachment, but I actually, this was a digitized spiral in the hoop. And I used a cording and uh, it was a digitized decorative stitch in a spiral with the number 43 foot. So without cord, it looks like this. So you can see the decorative stitch because in embroidery, people think the needle moves back and forth, left and right. It doesn't, the hoop moves. So the hoop moved and built these decorative stitches, which is something you can't use manually when you have uh, the 43 foot on. As I said, you have to have um, straight stitches. Okay, here's a different one. So this one, just another um, cord with a different stitch. And it made kind of funky twirls and twists. I have the most fun when I just play and experiment. I learn some stuff. I wreck some stuff. <laughs> I create some great stuff. Sometimes it all goes to heck in a hand basket, but you know, that's the creative endeavor. I found um, a page for you, but I actually have a link for this one. So we'll, we'll put the link up for this one. We're still playing with how that works. Uh, this was just a fun uh, page from a class I used to teach. It's a, just a little artistic endeavor has a few other things in there. It's actually quilting on paper, you guys. 
So I'll put the link up. You can download that if you're interested. So be safe. And we'll see you next week. Maybe not Monday. I might be stuffing my hole full of turkey and pie. And uh, if I don't get that, I like leftovers. Hint, hint. <laughs> Take care, you guys. Have a good weekend.